know hello this is Elsie Company from Bemis Crafty Corner and we are working on this ring binder journal so <clears throat> this is actually a photo album from uh, Simple Stories and I went ahead I did pull a couple of threads here because I wanted to kind of rough this up a little bit so I did that and I didn't like it so I'm probably gonna change that I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with the cover yet I did pop a hole here so that I can add a charm, a dangle charm to this, because I'm going to add a nice dangle to it. And when you guys saw this last, it was during a live. So what I did was uh, on the inside here, I just cut some paper. And this is all K and Company paper, uh, Susan Winget. <clears throat> I went ahead and I cut some pieces and I glued that paper onto some 22 point cardstock. Uh, this is a 22 point chipboard. It's really it's 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 chipboard, but it's uh, it's more like cereal box chipboard. It's not real heavy, not real thick. Uh, just kind of nice to be able to work with, and it just makes the pages a little sturdier. So let's take a look at the pages that we did. We went through and I glued all the paper on, and then popped all my holes, and I did ink all these up and cut them all down so that they're all nice and well fit. We did all of those. And I had uh, six dividers in here, but I decided to get rid of three of them for size because I was right at the top of the ring and I didn't want to overstress the rings because it's never a good idea. So I think there's probably around, I don't know, 12 pages or so in here. So that's 24 sides. And then uh, I have a couple of pockets. Now, originally we were gonna put big tags down these and have the tops up. But when I did that and I looked at it, I didn't like the way they looked at the top. So I decided to change it up. So on this one, I'm gonna do like a big index card kind of thing. And I like the look of this, but what I wanna do is move this more into the center so I can put three of them in here. <clears throat> and then I'll decorate on the front and put something like uh, some note paper, some lined paper or something on the back of them, or just some plain beige colored paper just so that you can write on them. So I did that, and I'm going to do a few more of those. And then on the dividers, I just decided I was I was originally going to paint these, and then I said, no, I'm going to leave them blank. Uh, I'll just use decorations on them. And then I put nice pockets that are gusseted. These are all gusseted pockets, so they're nice and thick and deep, and I can put a lot of stuff. And on the back, I am thinking I am going to probably put some kind of an envelope pocket or something here, maybe a security envelope type pocket. Uh, so... We have all of our pages. Let's see, we've got whole bunches of them here. And they're all just different colors and very uh, light on this one and kind of a lot of plants. The other thing that I've done here is I took the two big tags and I decided to cut them down and make smaller tags. So I'm gonna have them here instead. This way they're not protruding. So, that being said, let's get this out of the way. So now the next thing that uh, I did was I had ordered some prints for this. And what I ordered were these fairies. And I have these as mini cards. But it wasn't what I was looking for. So I went ahead and I had these done at my printer and then I matted them all kind of on contrasting but similar type paper I didn't want them to have I didn't want them to be really matchy matchy I wanted it to contrast a little bit so we did that and I inked all of those up and they are ready to go in the other thing that I did was I pulled they had a bunch of the little ones like this these little fairies so I did these as well and just made them into little, little squares. Some of them are larger than others. Some of them are smaller. This one's really big. So I have those. So I made all of those. And then I decided to punch out from some of the scraps. I punched out a bunch of these scallop circles in different colors. And then I took these and there were some images in here that were like this. They were just one and a half inch circles, uh, two inch circles, I don't know, like one and three quarters. 
So I took those and I mounted those on the scallop circles to make them look like little flowers. So I mounted those. And then I liked that, but I wanted to go a little different. So I also made some like this where uh, I used a brad that matched the color and it's like a little, so I'm gonna glue this in and this is gonna be sort of like a little tuck spot or like you can put a secret message under there. I might even put a piece of paper uh, so you can write in there, but it's kind of like a little secret hidden spot. So I made some of those. I tried it, you know, on center, off center, whatever. And then I had some little postcards that had the fairies on them, the same fairies, but different. Uh, I went ahead and printed these out as well. And then I just took them and ran them through my Xyron and put them onto some lined lavender paper. It's kind of a light, light purple. And I just inked these all up. And then I had these larger ones. So I went ahead and again, I lined the, put these on lined paper with my Xyron and then inked around all of them just to make them fit and work. So I don't want to do a whole lot of bling in this. I'm not even going to put pockets in it in this one, actually. All I'm going to be doing is just adding these little fairy cards into it because I really, really, really just want this to be a journaling journal, something that somebody just writes into like a diary. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of this stuff kind of pushed off to the side. I'm going to bring the book back in and we're going to go ahead and get started kind of figuring out where things are going to go. So I'll be right back. Okay, so we have gone through and we have put in our images and We've done that throughout the book and some of the little ones, some of the larger ones, I kept the larger ones sort of off to the side and for the most part they're in the middle of the page. Some of them I did put further down or further up just to pend it. Um, we do have to deal with this pocket as well and we do have some of the round ones in and as you can see this one's further down and further out. We have to deal with these pockets. Uh, with this pocket. So I have some tags cut that we're going to be making some tags for that. And as you can see, we've just kind of placed them throughout the journal. So I'm going to go ahead and get uh, set up and ready to do these tags and I will be right back. All right. So since I lost so much footage, I wanted to talk about the tags that are in the book. So when I'm cutting a tag, for me, the most important thing is that the dog ears on the side here, these little pieces that we clip off, match. So what I do is I take it and I place this. This is my scoreboard and on the back there's a diagonal line. Now you'll find this diagonal line on an envelope punch board uh, and on many We Are Memory Keeper boards. But on the back of their scoreboard especially they have it. So what I do is I just place this where up against the side rail here where I want my dog ear to be. And then I just take a rotary cutter or a blade, whatever, and I just kind of clip that off. Okay. Then I just put a ruler here and that tells me where my mark should be. And then I just turn the whole thing over and put the top side up against the side, top against the top. Go ahead and move that out of the way. Making sure everything's set just the way it should be. And then I just take my blade and cut that again. Okay. And that gives me two sides that are perfectly the same. So this piece is actually, um, it's three and a half inches wide. So at one and three quarter inches is where I would poke the hole. So I'm going to go ahead and line this up three and a half. And I'm just going to take a pencil at my one and three quarter mark. And I'm just going to put a little mark right here. And that's to tell me that I'm in the right spot. Once I have that, then I will go ahead and punch my hole at the depth that I want. And that makes sure that my hole's in the middle. And then I can always erase the mark. And it really won't matter because it's going to be under thread anyway later. So let's get all this out of the way. Let's move on to the next part. So obviously I want to round my corners. So get out my corner rounder and I'm going to round these together. I'm 
that's going to make sure that they're perfect. And then I'm not going to glue the paper on just yet. I'm going to set that to the side and I'm going to go to the next part of this. So the next part of this is adding the gesso. I have some gesso here. And I'm just going to paint this with some gesso because I don't want the paint to sink in too much. So I'm just going to pick this up. I'm just going to paint the one side with a coat of gesso. And you can skip this part if you want. It's entirely up to you. But I'm using a pink shade on this. And so I don't want the craft paper to bleed through it. So I'm going to go ahead and use some gesso. Now it's going to take a few minutes for this to dry. You can use your heat tool if you want to. Um, I recommend just letting it air dry. And it will take a few minutes to dry. And as soon as this is dry, I will be back and we will move on to the actual painting uh, of the tag and the assembly. Okay? All right. So we have gesso. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to put a base coat on this. And I'm going to go with the darker one. And I'm simply going to paint this on. Yeah, it is. I can guarantee it. I'm looking at the signals on the room so And because I used the gesso, I'm only gonna have to do one coat on the base. And then I'm gonna let this dry, and once this is dried then I'm going to come back and I'm going to use my sponge and the opposite color to create mm, sort of a flowered effect on here. And then I'm going to use a very small brush and some green to put in some leaves to make it look like it's flowers. This will take a few minutes to dry. And then we shall come back and add our flower petals into this. And then we're going to seal it. Okay. All right. So for the next part, I have two colors here. Uh, I have candy pink and pink blossom. And I'm just going to of wipe them across my palette here because I just want a thin layer and then I'm going to take my sea sponge and I'm going to pick the side I like which is this one and I'm just going to dab that lightly into the paint I don't want to saturate this and I'm just going to dab this on kind of all over, but not too close that I blur it out. Okay, so once I'm done with this, I'm going to let this dry. And when it dries, I'm going to come back in with some leaf green and a very fine brush. And I'm going to be putting in some little leaves on here to make this appear more like flowers. So I'm going to clean this up and then we'll get that uh, completed and we'll be able to move on with our tag. All right. We are done with that. So I'm going to go ahead and shake this up. I'm not even going to bother to put any out on a palette or anything here. Uh, I'm just going to work from the cap. And this is an extremely fine brush. So what I'm going to do is just kind of get a very small amount of paint here. And just draw in some lines and some leaves.
and this can be as few or as many as you want. You can fill an area or leave it blank. It's, it's entirely up to you. Um, you're probably going to cover this in one way or another anyway, but I do like to kind of add this little bit, just to give more of the impression that these are flowers. And if I get too much paint, just wipe it off and start again. And if you want it to look like they're just kind of there, make sure you add some to the edges. Whenever you're satisfied, you're done. A little more right here. And once you've got this part down, the next thing you're going to be doing is you're going to be letting this dry. And then if you want, you can go over this with some kind of a varnish. You can use Mod Podge or um, just a regular varnish. You can use glossy accents, however you want to cover this, or just leave it like this. This is fine too. Uh, I like to close it and seal it. So I'm going to be adding some matte to this once it's dried. So I have a very loose brush and some satin exterior interior varnish. This is a satin uh, varnish. I'm just going to put a little bit on my board because I don't see any reason to waste a cup or anything when I can wash this off. So I'm just going to apply this on here. And then I'm going to let this dry, and when it's all dry, I am going to go ahead and glue this down to the backing that I've chosen, which is just a piece of matching cardstock. So I'm going to glue this to the back, and I'm going to be gluing a smaller piece of just cream colored cardstock here uh, on the back just to make sure that. I have a little writing space. So we're going to let this varnish dry and then we All right. Will so as soon as you're done painting this and dabbing on some color and adding in your little stems, you can put some decorations on it and a little topper and of course an eyelet. And there you go, a cute little tag that you can add into your book and it looks like flowers. Well, I mean, it's not. It's an impressionist version of flowers. Anyway, that's it guys. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get moving on to the rest of this book. And I'm going to show you the tassel that we're going to make and then uh, how we're going to do all of that stuff and all the stuff inside. And I'll be back in just a few minutes. Okay, so the next thing I want to work on 
uh, is going to be the dangle for the side of the book. So um, let's get this out of the way. And let's talk about some of the things that we're going to be needing for this. So first we're going to need some hardware. This is about, uh, about seven eighths of an inch from end to end. And this is just over half an inch. It's just a jump ring, but it's kind of a heavy duty one. And then I've got some silk cord here that I'm going to be using for beading. And then I have a whole bunch of other stuff. So we have um, some lace, some sari silk, some ribbons and rickrack. I have some trellis trim, and then I have some fun fur in a couple of different colors. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start laying them out. And just kind of getting them sort of piled up here. So now that I have this, this is the point where I decide whether or not I want to add more to this or if I'm good with it just the way that it is. And I kind of like this just the way it is. Um, it, it's got some texture and it's got nice colors and it's got a good variety of stuff. So at this point, uh, I use these little rubber bands. And you can pick these up at the Dollar Tree or, you know, at the thrift store if you find like one of those rubber band looms. What I do is I hold this as tight as I can and I give it a little bit of a twist. That's going to kind of tell me where I want to be. And then I wrap this rubber band around here about a dozen times. But this rubber band is not going to last. Matter of fact, if it makes it through this process, I'd be impressed. So I'm just going to put that on there just to hold it. And what I'm looking for here on the ring is going to be the the break. I want the break in the loop right there. Okay. And at this point is when I'm going to be attaching this to here. So I'm going to get out my pliers real quick here. <coughs> Excuse me. And I just need my needle nose pliers. Okay. Now this one is um, considerably stronger than some of the other rings. So I am going to be using my ring here and all this is is just a slotted ring that allows me to put the piece in there so that I can open this and I'm just opening it by twisting them this way not pulling them okay so we're going to slide this in to the ring and then we're just going to pull them apart. I'm just going to slide this in. And then I'm going to put this back in and just push these back together. And then I'm going to make sure that I put the opening back in to the inside here. Okay. So once that's done, I can put this on. Okay. But I need to make sure that it's secure. And to do that, you can use uh, embroidery floss or friendship bracelet floss. Or if you have a piece of book binding thread that's left over after you've bound a book. And you know, you always have that like six to eight inches left or so. 
that's what this is good for holding on to. So what I do is I take it and I put about an inch under my thumb and then I'm going to wrap this as tight as I can over the rubber band. Okay. And then I'm going to put a very simple square knot on here. Right over left and left over right. And I can use my pliers to pull that even tighter. So once I have it nice and tight, I can cut off these ends. I don't want to go too close to the knot, but I don't want them sticking out. There we go. And now I have the basis of my tassel. Now I am going to be doing some beading on this. So what I want to do is I want to locate my silk cords because that's where I'm going to be doing my beading. And for this one, it's really simple. I'm just going to be putting some colored beads onto the cord. What I have here is some variegated pink seed beads with a nice wide opening. And so I'm just going to put like 10 or so of these on here. Eek. And once I have the number that I want on here, then I'm going to get out because I do want to add a couple of charms to this. So I'm going to get out some of my littler jump rings. And I'm going to incorporate those jump rings into this. So let me grab my jump ring here. get one and I want to make sure that it's closed and then I'm simply going to thread it on and I'm going to put it where I want it we'll say right here and then I'm just going to tie a knot around it just a simple knot Okay, now I have a place where I can put a charm. And I'm just going to do the same thing again, and I'm going to do that on all four of these. Uh, and then I'm going to go back and add some charms. So let's go ahead and add a charm here now. And I can use bigger beads if I want to. I just like the seed bead. So let's take a look in our charms here, because this is a fairy journal, so I think we should add some fairy charms to it. Ooh, decisions, decisions. this one for right now. Now I can add another jump ring to this if I want to, or I can just take this get the opening around here. Open it. Add my charm. it back up. And 
and I've added a charm to the dangle. And again, I'll just do the same thing. I'll add some seed beads here. Might even want you on there anyway. Okay. I did want you to know. And again, I'll just take one of my little jump rings here, making sure that it's closed, add it onto the thread where I want it to be, and tie a knot. Now, if you're worried that the knots are going to come untied, Probably the best way to assure that they're not is to put a small amount of fabric glue on them. And then I'm just going to clip off that piece there at the end because I don't want that. Find my opening. Twist this to open it. Take another charm, which in this case happens to be dragonfly. Put it on. Make sure that I've closed the edge nicely. And it just adds a little something extra that goes in there just to kind of add in. And you don't have to do every single silk cord. You could do one or two of them and you're just going to have that little bit in there uh, just to set it off. So I'm going to finish this and then we're going to come back and we're going to work some more on the journal, okay? Okay, so I'm pretty much finished. I was going to leave the cover blank, but I decided instead to emboss some fairies on it. And then I went ahead and I stamped it. It says, all you need is faith, trust, and a sprinkle of fairy dust. And then I put a little fairy dust here. And it's really hard to see this until you really catch the look of it. But it's uh, holographic. So it sparkles in a rainbow of colors. I added a little bit of burlap here with some ribbon and then just added on this rolled raffia with some leaves around it just to give the impression of a branch and then we have our beautiful tassel with our charms all throughout beautiful little charms on here and on the inside uh, we just added some little bits of bling here and there we have a little pocket here some rub-ons a little tuck spot here, some bling, a little carnation. And then we have our journaling index card here, a little flower bow up there, a little tree of life here and some leaves, some of our little mini postcards that we went ahead and uh, just put lined paper on the back of and then <sighs> just inked those up and then I made a little pocket for the back here with some journaling cards, three or four little journaling cards in there and some more rub-ons, some more rub-ons here, um, some more bling. And I really wanted to leave these pages open. This is one of our little swing tags up here. And then I made these three little cards that nest together in this pocket. And on the other side of this I have just a office envelope here and inside of the office envelope is just some white cards for journaling close that one up and then we have our little half pocket here that has the tags that we made so here's the pink tag that we made and then a yellow one and a purple one. So these all fit in here because this pocket is uh, gusseted. So it's a little bit thicker than a normal pocket. So we have all of those. And of course we use the fun fur on that so that, you know, 
we would actually mimic the tassel that we have on the outside. And another one of our round tags of bling here. Another flower here, and we did a double piece here. One of our swing tags down here. A little leaf, some more tags, some more journaling cards, another swing tag up here, some more bling. And on the back of this one, again, we have another one of those envelopes filled with cards. Another little guy here with some bling. A little tuck spot up here. Another rub on. And then our final little piece in the back. So that's it. I mean, I really didn't want to go over the top with this. I really wanted this journal to be very simplistic um, and very basic. And I really liked the way that this all turned out. Um, I did mix up some special embossing powder for this. I'm not so sure about this one, but we'll work on it. Um, <laughs> Anyway, that's it, guys. Thanks so much for uh, hanging out in the lives with me when I got this started and for watching the video to see the end. Until I see you again, if you haven't done so already uh, and you're new here, do me a favor and hit the red button and subscribe. And then, as always, like me, ring my bell, and share me with all your friends. Till I see you again. Bye-bye.